Dolph Lundgren. You may remember him as the formidable Soviet boxing champ in Rocky IV. He was also He-Man and Masters of the Universe. But he is also a former Fulbright scholar at MIT. And once upon a time, he was a little boy. I believe it or not. I know that's hard to believe. But he was a little boy growing up right here in Stockholm, Sweden. And he's with us. It's nice to be able to visit you in your own country. Thanks, Joe. Good to yeah. see you again. Yeah, it's very nice to be here. This yeah. is a heck of a nice place. Was it hard to leave it's Stockholm? It's beautiful. Well, you know, it's... Uh, you don't really appreciate your hometown until you leave, That's I think. Right. You know, when you're there, when you're a kid, you, you want to go out and you want to see, uh, want to see the states, you want to sure. see, uh, see the world, you know. But now when I come back, it's wonderful. Really when, you're, when you're in L.A. and you close your eyes at night and you think about home, what do you, what do you see? A lot of food. <laughs> food, yes. Is that the first thing you want when you come home? Yeah. What, are, what is your, your mom? You have sisters here, too, right? Yeah, I got two sisters. And what do they uh, cook mother. up for you? Um, Different kinds of herring, Swedish meatballs, different <laughs> kinds of, uh, you know, cheese and smorgasbord. A smorgasbord, smorgasbord that's right. Yeah, so I just go straight from the airport <laughs> right to the smorgasbord. <laughs> you do so much traveling and you're a Swede that lives in the United States. What do you find is the biggest misconception that, that we Americans have about Swedish people? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, I think... Uh, I think Americans might look at Swedes as, you know, being not too talkative and kind of dull. But it's 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 not really true. You know, I think that Swedes are more they're more cho they're more choosy. You know, when they when they uh, when they approach right somebody, the yeah. yeah. But when you make a friend here, they'll be a friend for life. For you sure. don't see see strangers chatting on the bus, though. No, you no, don't you say don't. hi, y'all. How you doing? You know, walking down the street. <laughs> you know. So that might have been hard for you to get used to then when you came uh, to America. Yeah. Was but now it's hard coming back this way because you know I'm I'm Fair pretty enough. talkative. And, yeah, I, I'm uh, told that you grew up as a little kid. I mean, but I mean physically little. In fact, you have described yourself as a late bloomer, the studious type, one we might call in the states call an egghead. When did you finally? You know, lot, yeah. No, that that's where your words out of an article I, I found. Um, when did you shoot up? Um, I think about like, 15, 16. Yeah, like five or six inches, or yeah. At least, you know, Boy. like four inches in a year. You know, the kind of, you know, when you like uh, teenagers grow fast and they kind of go to, go to a movie theater and stand up too fast and pass out, you know, that <laughs> kind of thing. Happened to me all the time. Must so have all these scars in my head. <laughs> you surprise everyone all of a sudden? Uh, yeah. Mostly you. Yeah, well, yeah, people are surprised now when I tell them this, you know, because they don't really, they think it's a, my press agent that came up with this, you know, but it's not really true. I think, uh, I think it makes me understand people who are not physically large or, or physically su successful. And uh, I never, I had to rely on my brains and things like that to, to, uh, to create an identity. You know when ki kids are always insecure and, and yeah. I don't really think physical too much. And, and at that age you kind of want to be the head of the, captain of the football yeah, team rather than the top the guy in the science team, class, yeah. right? Yeah, right. <laughs> that really gets you, doesn't get you too many dates, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a new movie out uh, called Red Scorpion, is that right? Yeah. And uh, I think it just opened at the Cannes Film Festival. It's got some controversy around it. Yeah, it does. Filmed in, is it Nambia? Namibia. Namibia, Namibia yeah. which is run by South Africa. And of yeah, course, there's a big boy club. Yeah, there's a big war going on down there. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a tough thing. I came down there uh, to do a film in Swaziland, which is one of the other independent countries. And there was a, uh, the king there is 19 years old. Uh -huh. And he woke up one morning and he felt a little bad, so he threw the whole cabinet in prison, you know? So we couldn't make the movie there, so they had to oh, move. Oh, so in the middle of the movie, they changed it. No, beginning, like the first yeah. week. So I was faced with either being sued. Break or, the contract. Or, yeah, break my contract or do the film. So, you know, if it had been in South Africa, I wouldn't have done it. And in fact, the movie is about you go down and help the rebels fight against I help against the rebels, the yeah, the movie. So, so you can check it out. Once the movie out, comes yeah. out, they'll, they'll quit arguing, I guess. But good yeah, to see you. Yeah. We are back now. I'm talking with Dolph Lundgren, who, of course, was the, the Soviet champ in the Rocky IV movie. You were also He-Man, of course. Yeah. I have kids, so I see He-Man. He -Man. He -Man. <laughs> you bet. Uh, you were out running this morning. Everyone saw you out there getting a good workout. Yeah, it was wonderful. You know, Stockholm is a great city for running, it really is. It's not like Times Square or something like that. You know? Well, you've got a, a workout videotape, right? Yeah. Well, you kind of came by that naturally, I guess. I heard you used to snow ski to get yeah, to school. I used to, yeah. A lot of, in, my, in my days, a lot of Swedish kids used to snow ski you know, in the 60s. Not because it was a fun thing to do, but because that was the way to get to school. Both. <laughs> both, I think, yeah. Yeah. We used to have a lot of snow. You'd have to clear the, clear the way down to the uh, road every morning, you know, get your good workout. Maybe that's why I got big. I don't know. 
<laughs> and you're on your way to Australia. Tell us why. Yeah, uh, I got a new film in Australia, in Sydney. Uh, I'm really excited because I lived there for a year. I went to University of Sydney for a year. And uh, I'm going down there in August, and I'll be uh, doing a, a cop movie down there. Action, obviously, of course. So you'll be a, an action cop? I'll be, or are you going to be the bad guy? I'll be a good guy. You'll be the good guy this time. But tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you a little know, tougher than tougher than He-Man, I'd say. <laughs> you've said that the people in, in Sweden uh, are reserved, and you've also said, though, that they're just really hardworking and honest, and, and there aren't a lot of the dangers that you, that you come across in the United States. Was it tough to get used to them, some of the, uh, shall we say, maybe people not dealing on the up and up in Hollywood? Well, obviously, Hollywood is, is uh, probably the worst place to end up if you're from here. <laughs> because, you know, when you live in Sweden, you don't, you don't really realize how, how well off you are. Because there, there are really no racial problems. There, no, there, there are, haven't been war for a long time. There are no natural disasters or, you know, weather problems or anything like that so you come to to the states and if, or anywhere else really you have to deal with a lot of pro, a lot of conflicts you know gee it sounds like you almost set up this utopia and yet you leave it i also get this feeling that while everything is really wonderful and laid back and peaceful that if you that you really have to leave in order to attain the kind of wealth and status that you've achieved i don't is that would that be true to a certain extent i think so i think that uh I think America is, uh, it's a new world. It's, uh, it's a place where people from all over the world come because they share something that they want to try to achieve something special in their lives. And uh, I was one of those people. And I think people come to America for 20 or 50 years, you know. And um, I, I think it's true, sure. We've heard that, that some, some people say that in Sweden they could use some of our um, individualism, ruggedness, what could, what do you think that we could take from Sweden and adapt perhaps to our country and make our place a better place to live? <laughs> uh, I was going to say the women, but... Uh, <laughs> no, we've we've better, seen no, some of the I women should, here, Dolph. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, I'd say the, uh, maybe, uh, how about clean water and clean mm -hmm. air. Clean water. And uh, honesty. Because here, unless, unless somebody tells you different, you, you uh, assume a person is honest. Whereas in Hollywood, you assume they're dishonest, unless you know the unless somebody tells you different, right? Serious, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big, big difference. Do you think you might ever come back here to live? I think so. Sure. I think uh, I think I'll get a place here for sure because uh, I enjoy more and more to come back, see my parents, my my family, and and just enjoy it because it's a very pleasant place to be. Feels good, huh? Yeah, Gee, it's yeah. nice to see you here on your home turf. Uh -huh. <laughs>